Well, hello, it's Mr. Holmwood here from Shannybrook End School, and we're welcoming you to this information sharing session that's to support you in supporting your children, our students, during this year. I'm going to introduce you to two of the key people who'll be supporting your child through their journey this year. I'll hand over to them now. Thanks for listening. Hello, my name is Mrs Sullivan and I will be your child's year leader for the next two years. So that's for year eight and into year nine. Obviously I've met some of them uh, through year seven so, and it's really nice to continue that working relationship for the next two years. So if you need anything, please don't hesitate to call and I look forward to meeting you, not virtually, but really soon. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, some of you will remember me from last year. I'm Mrs Small and I'm your child's progress leader. So I was delighted to be their progress leader last year and obviously continue that journey with them this year. It was so lovely during what was quite a strange year seven to have so many communications with so many of you. And I really hope we can keep that going moving forward. Okay, so you guys all know how to contact me. Um, you can contact me via telephone or by email. And obviously I look forward, like Mrs Sullivan has just said, to seeing you all um, in person very soon, I hope. I'm just going to hand you back to Mr Homewood. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you've met year leader and progress leader for the year group. And I'm now going to hand over to Mr Davis. Hope you enjoy the rest of the information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Holmwood, and thank you also to our year leader and progress leader team. My name is Mr. Davis. I'm assistant head teacher for skills and employability, and I'm here to talk you through attitude, skills and knowledge, or as we call it, ASK. And this is how we prepare our learners for their future. So when supporting our learners' future, it comes down to the big picture. And that big picture is Milton Keynes over the next 30 years. As part of the MK Futures 2050 programme, there are a series of projects. Now, one of those projects, Project 3, is Learning 2050. And this highlights the need for students, for learners with high quality transferable skills and knowledge in order to be able to enter the labour market in Milton Keynes over those next 30 years. This is something here at Shandybrook End School that we are dedicated to supporting our learners with. The first way in which we support our learners is through our ASK or our Attitude, Skills and Knowledge trackers. Slide. So here you can see an Attitude tracker. You'll also find this on the school website and in your child's learning passport. You'll see across the top that we have different levels going from launching through to mastering. And you'll see here that we have five key attitudes that we expect students to demonstrate um, and also develop during their time here at Shenley Brook End School. So, we want students to be curious, creative, but we want them to cooperate and commit, and we want them to be consistent in what they do. And this attitude tracker is meant as a, I suppose, a roadmap to support them with that. If we believe, and if the student believes that they are, for example, developing with their creativity, then they can look at their attitudes tracker with support from a form tutor, from a parent, or from a teacher in order to consider what they need to do to become progressing or even better mastering. This gives us a language of learning for all year groups that we can speak to students about to support them in their attitudes development. And as I said, they, these attitudes can be found on our website, sbeschool.org.uk. Skills and knowledge. As part of our skills framework, and this is to support the development of transferable skills for our students to go through school and take those into the workplace. We have tensile, teamwork, expression, numeracy, solving problems, independence, literacy and inquiry. We want to stretch students. We want to support students in their skills development so that they can demonstrate, for example, teamwork, 
in a geography lesson on the sports field with PE and also um, at the weekend in a volunteering activity. It's that sort of teamwork that if they take into the workplace in five, ten years time, it will support both them and, and their future employer. These ten, tensile trackers can be found again on the school website. And with regards to knowledge, each subject team around the school have their own separate knowledge trackers. Attitudes and skills are very much generic and knowledge trackers are applicable to the subject. Further support students, we also have ASK posters around school. Slide. Here we have an example of ASK posters. Um, and the idea of these posters is to encourage and stimulate that language of learning. You'll see on the right an attitudes poster. Students can look at this to consider how best to demonstrate curiosity or creativity and just to reflect on, on whether they're doing that or not. This will also support a dialogue between a member of staff. Slide. Next, we have flight miles. Slide. So here you see an example of a learning passport page and on this right hand side, this is where students will collect positive flight miles. When the members of staff give the students um, flight miles, what they'll do is they'll also explain to the student why they're receiving that. And these will link into our attitudes and our skills. So, for example, well done, you've demonstrated excellent teamwork there. I particularly like the fact you listened to your group before coming up with your final idea. Slide. Next, we have curriculum maps. So here we have an example of a curriculum map, which can be found on the school website. Now, Mr. Nash will be talking about these in greater detail shortly. But basically, you'll see that there is an um, opportunity to see what skills and what attitudes your child's developing in their particular year group, in their particular subject at any given time. Slide. So it's important that students reflect upon their attitude, skills and knowledge. So next, I just wanted to talk you through a few examples of ASK reflection from specific subject areas. So in history, there is um, ASK built into feedback. So, for example, here you'll see stickers to support student reflection where students can identify which level they think they've performed at. Also, we've got this idea of dialogue between teacher and student as they reflect upon their, an, an assessment. In this case, it's broken down by each question. You can see here that, again, we have the pathway to support students in how they get better and improve. And at the bottom here, we have um, some reflection by the student to help them understand or consider what they need to do to improve for next time. Slide. So another example would be PE. Now here you can see in PE how they are using ASK with the yellow sticker there to support students in identifying their strengths and also improving upon their weaknesses. Again, more reflection, which allows a dialogue between both teacher or member of staff and student. Slide. So linking through to the MK2050 programme, we have links with careers, education, information, advice and guidance, or SEAG. Slide. So it's important we link tensile skills from the classroom through to future career pathways. Here's an example linked to the sub a subject, so in this case English, of how tensile skills can support in getting, achieving a particular career pathway, in this case barristers. So on the left of this um, mocked up job advert, 
We have got tensile skills listed, expression, literacy and independence, as well as different career pathway steps. Um, this helps us support and link the language of learning, tensile, through to career pathways and also supports us in preparing our learners for their future. Again, it creates a dialogue between members of staff and students. Here's another example, in this case linked to the PE subject, and this is for a PE teacher. So finally, as we support our learners in preparing for their future, we talk about connective learning projects. These are designed to provide educational experiences for our students that prepares them for the Milton Keynes of their future. We plan to turn Milton Keynes into our classroom so that students can actively engage in connecting their learning. And we'll, play, we'll do that through a cycle, a cycle where students explore. They explore real life and memorable stimulus at the start of a project. They develop, they develop cross-curricular links and tensile skills through our holistic provision. They'll innovate. We will facilitate students to shape their own responses to the issues or problems put before them. And students will get the opportunity to express themselves, to express themselves through high quality work of which they can be proud. Slide. So thank you very much for your time. And here we have an overview of how we prepare our learners for their future through attitude, skills and knowledge. Good evening. Thank you very much to Mr Davis. I can't emphasise enough the importance of looking at ASK after each reporting period. It really does help students to focus their minds on what it is that they need to do to improve. So my responsibilities are normally are around progress uh, and making sure that students have everything that they need in order to do really well at school. And my responsibilities over the last few months have changed due to the current pandemic. We're trying where possible to keep all aspects of school life going, but obviously trying to make sure that students and staff are safe at this challenging time. One of the things that we were not happy about last year was our inability to meet with parents due to the lack of functionality on our current IT packages. So to stop that happening again this year, we've bought ourselves a new parents evening system. This system will allow parents to have a conversation with each of their the teachers of their children uh, through a webcam. Parents will need to book appointments, with teachers and then they'll be able to log on to the system either through a, a phone or a computer and then each appointment will happen automatically. Obviously we have had instances where parents are running late from work or whatever that might be. This is going to cause problems with the new system as we're not meeting in person anymore. But if you have any problems or technical difficulties on the evening we'll try where possible to find an alternative way of getting the information to you. So as parents even approaches, we'll send out more information to you about logging on to the new system. Now, the other thing that I really wanted to bring to your attention um, is uh, RM Unify. There's a couple of reasons for that. Um, the main thing is uh, that it's where our students go to access their emails. It's also where students can download Office 365, so that's Word, Excel, and all of those sorts of things for free um, through the school license. So while they're a student with us, they are able to access that for free. And they also have access on RM Unify to the web versions of Teams and Outlook, which means that they can get they can use those systems. Now, Teams, for those of you that don't know, was something that we used extensively during the lockdown last year. So in the event of a partial closure of the school, or a full closure, if your child is sent home, it is likely that they will have all of their lessons on their timetable when they're at home. And that will take place through Microsoft Teams. There will be instances where teachers are unwell, but and we will try where possible to arrange cover for those lessons. But we certainly will be using those lessons, probably not as much as the, the whole lesson, but using that lesson to set up work for students to carry on doing while they're at home 
and there'll be time for the students to ask questions as these classes will be limited to 30. So access to RM Unify is really important and having a computer at home is also equally really important. So I've sent home um, surveys to all of the parents. One is um, about IT access and I'd really appreciate it if you haven't been able to do that yet that you uh, make sure you fill that one in. Um, equally there is another questionnaire that went out about vulnerable students and the um, children of critical worker parents. Now we really want to make sure um, that people have access to the school if they need to, uh, if there is a partial closure or full closure of the school. And we do intend to have the school open or the small school open for the students that need access to it. The second thing is just to make sure, and I'm sure most um, students know their own email address now, but the username um, for their logon when they log in anywhere around school is the beginning part of their email address, followed by at sbeschool.org.uk. So you can see my little example there, just in case um, they do need a reminder about what their email address is. Now the next bit I'm going to talk about is Go for Schools. And Go for Schools um, is was used extensively again over lockdown, primarily as a way of sharing homework, which I'll talk about in a moment. But equally, it gives access to the timetable. So if there was a, a closure of the school, you would be able to see what lessons they've got on any one day and direct the students towards those lessons. So you can see the timetable on there, but you can equally underneath there, you can see a little sample of what you might be able to see in terms of progress information. So for each subject, students may have multiple assessments during a year, and that information will be shared on the detailed progress section of their screen. You and your child can both have access to that information, um, but it, and it's really useful and I would always encourage uh, where possible for you to have that conversation with your child after an assessment and just ask them what went really well in that test or in that assessment. What would you do differently next time uh, to make sure you do better? And um, another thing to do is to just link it with the ASK. So find the ASK sheet for that particular subject. And just ask them to say, you know, where do you think you are now in terms of ASK and what could you do next time to make sure you uh, improve. So one of the other aspects of Goes for Schools is that we have a homework module and that will allow you to see all of the homeworks that are current for that uh, your child. Equally um, you will need to be able to sometimes look back at other tasks that are maybe a little bit um, further back in time uh, just to see whether they've been completed and you'll be able to see just on the top right there there's view full list so you can see all of the homeworks that have been set i would encourage uh, parents wherever possible to mark homework tasks as complete when they are done but equally sometimes that is forgotten please contact us at school if that is the case with um, the homework that your child has on the system um, it does allow uh, students to tick it off once they've done it and we will still ask uh, students to record their homework into their homework uh, into their learning passports. Okay so um, finally it comes on to attendance and behaviour. You can see the uh, attendance on the system um, that we have for your child and um, if there is uh, instances of um, unauthorised or um, unknown marks that you're a little bit worried about, I've given examples of those here, then please make sure you contact us at school and we'll look into that for you. I'd also encourage you to always have a little look at the behaviour section. We've changed that this year slightly in that teachers are now able to write school, um, sorry, home notes. Home notes means that you will get a brief idea of what the behaviour incident was in school. So it allows you to have a little bit more of an informed conversation when you're at home. But I'd encourage you wherever you're not sure about what's been written or whether there's a behaviour incident that you're not sure about, please contact the school um, and, and ask your year leader to speak about that. Finally, um, just 
have a little look. Um, you can have a look at the reports. All of the reports are on uh, Go for Schools. We'll flag that up with you when a report takes place. Um, and you will also uh, periodically be able to get an email um, home, which will tell you how many positive events and how many negative events took place in the previous week. If you have any problems logging on to Go for Schools, or, or any kind of uh, problems to do with Go for Schools, please contact um, Serena Tier, whose email is just at the bottom of the page there, and she'd be more than happy to help you. So we've reduced the number of reports um, that are sent home during this year, primarily because we wanted to make sure that we give time for students to readjust and to back into normal routines, give them a chance to catch up on work they may have missed during year seven, for example, with your children. So the first progress check is on the 14th of December and the second progress check will be on the 26th of April. Now, we also have various other important uh, dates that we will write to you about regarding um, the parents evening, but also uh, preferences evening, because this is the year where your children will make the choice in terms of uh, what they want to do next in their GCSEs. So we will be making sure that you're aware of all of those um, dates and, and we will write to you shortly about that. Thank you very much for listening. I'll now hand over to Mr Nash, who's going to talk to you about how this fits in with homework and curriculum maps. Thank you, Mr McCluskey, and thank you to you all for listening to our virtual open evening presentation. As Mr McCluskey said, I'm Mr Nash, and I'm one of the assistant head teachers at Shenley Brook End School. One part of my role is to oversee and monitor our curriculum. So I'm going to start off by talking about our curriculum maps and how these can be used when looking at your child's homework. Each year, our team leaders update their curriculum maps for their subject area. These maps are a very useful way to be able to see what topics your child is learning about at any given time. This proved particularly useful when students were working from home and had been working superbly through their work set by their teacher and wanted to get ahead of what was being taught. It meant students were able to read over and complete their own work on the topics coming up. To find these maps, you'll need to visit our website and click on the student section. In there, you will find a link to the curriculum maps. On this page, you'll find five buttons, one for each year group, and you can click on whichever one is applicable to your child. Let's have a look at an example curriculum map. This slide gives you an example of the information you'll find on our maps. Firstly, at the top, there'll be a little bit of context behind that curriculum and what your child is going to be doing that year. This may also contain information about what they've learned prior to this and possibly what it might lead into. Over the next few rows, you'll be able to find information linking to our ASK structure that Mr. Davis has talked about. You'll be able to see that the key knowledge being covered, which is particularly helpful if you want to ask your child about what they've been learning about in school, You'll also see skills and attitudes that they've been developing whilst learning in that subject. The numbers at the top indicate the weeks of the year. These are there as rough idea of timings of the lessons. But please keep in mind things do sometimes change and this is there as a bit of a guideline for you all. These curriculum maps are in the process of being updated by our team leaders as we speak. And once they are completed for this year, we will update the website as well. In the meantime, the ones that are on the website are still very useful and the knowledge part is pretty much the same each year. Next, I'd like to talk about homework and this links perfectly to curriculum maps as the maps are there to help guide students and parents to what information is being looked at during the school year and can be used to help prompt students into reading ahead when necessary. Homework is recorded on Go for Schools, which Mr McCluskey mentioned, and this is where you should visit to see the number of homeworks your child has at any given point. But even with this system in place, I'm more than sure there'll be a time when you ask your child what homework they have, and their reply will be, I ain't got any. Now, if you've looked on Go for School and can see they're telling the truth, then you can guide them towards our curriculum maps and get them to work on topics that they're going to be getting onto. Also linking to homework is our homework handbook, which you can see highlighted on the screen. By clicking this link, you'll be taken to our home learning guide.
The Home Learning Guide is there to show parents the different types of homework your child could be set. It is there to dispel the myth that all homework is set in the same way and marked in the same way. Sometimes your child might be set a task to watch a TV documentary or visit a website which would put them in a good position to be prepared for a future lesson. Or they may be given exam style questions to answer, which are designed to encourage independent study and improve their self-motivation. But alongside that, each piece of homework may be marked in a variety of different ways. On some homeworks, there may be that traditional written teacher feedback, but on others, it may be assessed in class via group discussions and question and answer. So the point of this is to show we do set and assess homeworks in a variety of ways. And it'd be great to talk to your child about the homeworks and discuss how the teacher has checked that they've done this work. For the next part, I'm going to talk about Microsoft Teams. For some of you, your child will see this as second nature. And this is really important in the current climate that we all need to have access to Teams in case of having to work from home. Microsoft Teams will become our virtual learning environment at school over the next year. And your child will be using this more and more to access class resources and homework that is set. You can see on screen now how your child will be able to find the web-based version of Microsoft Teams. Simply, they could Google RM Unify and enter their normal school network login details or visit the web page, which is on the, on the slide at this moment. Once they are in Microsoft Teams, they'll be able to see a number of teams appear each labelled with the class code that appears on their timetable and on Go4Schools. They'll be able to click on any of the classes they have found resources. They'll be able to find resources that is applicable to that subject. The example on screen at the moment is one of my Year 7 classes. And you can see that they've had their first assignment set, which appears on the first page they click on under Posts. The assignment which you see is their homework and they can complete this by clicking on view assignment which will take them to the task and give them necessary instructions they need as well as any deadlines applicable to that task. Once they have completed it they can mark it done which will then let their teacher know that they have, all their students have completed it. Microsoft Teams will also be used as a platform as I mentioned earlier for online learning. But at this point, all of us at Shenley Brook End would much rather have children in school working with teachers to help your child achieve their best possible results. But it's there as a platform to use. Please encourage your child to explore these platforms that we've talked about. And I thank you at this point for listening to me. And I'm going to hand you over to Mr Doyle. Thank you very much for that, Mr Nash. My name is Mr Doyle and I am here to talk to you today about well-being at Shennybrook End School, how we as a school and as a PE team are making sure that well-being is at the heart of every decision that we make on the curriculum within PE and also the wider whole school community as well. As you'll be aware, Shennybrook End School and the Five Dimensions Trust take the holistic education and overall well-being of their students extremely seriously. And the Shennybrook End School PE team in the past few years in particular have um, been doing some research to find out just how much of an impact sport, physical activity and exercise in particular has on an overall well-being of a student. That incorporates the physical, the social, the emotional and also the, the sort of separate matter of mental health for students as well. And we've come up with a very clear vision that we try to ensure that students leave Shennybrook End School with having had excellent opportunities to develop a lifelong love of sport and physical activity. It could be one of each or it could be both. But essentially, students know how to exercise. They know how to keep themselves physically healthy. But more important, they understand the impact that that has. There are four very clear dimensions and areas that we as a school believe in and we believe that there is an impact on physical activity, particularly when you raise the heart rate. The first one is the physical 
and for students who exercise more regularly there is a greater risk that they will lead a healthier life. That is fairly common knowledge that the, um, the benefits to the cardiovascular system, the lower rates of obesity and therefore cardiac disease in the future and other elements are, are well documented. Um, but we want to make sure that students understand fully just how much exercise they should do, what types of exercise they should do and the real impact it can have for them and their families and their physical health in the future. But we also explicitly teach students about the sometimes hidden benefits of physical activity and exercise on the brain and what it can do. For example, the release of chemicals such as dopamine and endorphins, which can have a considerable effect on a student's psychological well-being and their mental health. And the more that you exercise and the more you raise your heart rate, the more of those chemicals can be released. It's not just a sense of belonging that sport provides psychologically for students, but it actually has a real impact um, on the release of those chemicals. Not only that, there is new and emerging evidence and research in the last few years in particular that states that actually learning is affected by rates of physical activity. The more exercise a young person will do, the more capacity they have to learn in their subjects and their classroom lessons and just in life in general. Um, there are very key and clear um, links that are drawn between the students that achieve the highest at the end of year 11 and their GCSEs to the amount of physical activity that they record and report that they do. So by giving students more opportunities within school, we're hopefully also helping them out in the classroom. And I mentioned belonging, which is an enormous part of what we do at Shenley Brick in School. Um, and we try to ensure that students have every opportunity to enjoy really fantastic, memorable experiences. So if those beliefs underpin everything that we want students to be able to understand and be able to do those attitudes and skills and knowledge towards their own well-being, how are we delivering that in the physical education curriculum? Well, during year seven, students will have had their first of two years of our unique and innovative, happy and healthy, successful curriculum. This is completely Shenley Brookend's own curriculum offer, and it takes the best of traditional teaching and learning in PE, such as sports specific skills and health related fitness factors. But it also explicitly develops a student's understanding of what makes them employable and well-rounded young people in the future and what they can actually learn on the training pitch and in the sports hall. This could, for example, be the self-confidence that a young person is able to get from finally being able to take part in an activity they haven't before or develop a particular skill. It could be the preparation and motivation that we know is such an important part of life in the future. Um, and they do this by making sure explicitly they're ready for all weathers and the opportunity for them to be real self-starters and be proactive in their own activities in PE um, and develop that love of those games. It could be the resilience that they develop by trying something new, failing at it, but understanding that that process needs to be gone through for them to be able to make progress on it. There's lots and lots of ways in which our curriculum um, allows us to not only develop it, but also assess students in the right way. Um, we're not asking for them to judge themselves on how many times they can shoot a basket out of 10 in order to be told that they're really good at PE and that they're able to understand their own health and well-being. What we're actually trying to do is get them to understand that by being self-motivated and by developing all of those characteristics important for later life, they're actually training hard and they're using them and, and they're developing them in the right way anyway. But we believe in these factors so much that we don't limit it to PE lessons and through form time and assemblies in the last few years, we have really looked to try and take on the idea of getting students to understand the importance of being physically active and of having exercise in their lives. Um, on the screen, you can see two videos that have been used in assemblies with students across year seven to 11. Um, in the past couple of years and I have put the links on there. I encourage you to watch these videos with your child. It 
enables both you and them to understand just how important that physical activity, exercise and sport is. And it's not just us that believe in the power of PE and the power of physical activity, but we engage with local and national partners to try to develop and drive on this belief, encouraging us to take students and you, the parents, carers, guardians with us on the journey to ensure that as many of our students as possible can leave with these amazing experiences. We are a nationally recognised well school. The Youth Sport Trust, powered by the Booper Foundation, have launched a movement that is encouraging schools to place well-being at the heart of everything the school does. That is all the way from the very youngest students coming through to the staff who have been at the school for sometimes decades. We want every single person to be ready to learn, to be ready to engage in what our amazing school community can offer. And to do that, we have to place well-being at the heart of what we do. We made a pledge and along with 29 other schools, we started on this journey as one of the pilot schools and it's given us some amazing ideas and some real validation to the PE curriculum that we are offering at the moment, that it prepares our young people for the world of tomorrow and their ability to be a success in it as well. So how can we put into practice all of our beliefs? Well, we at Shennybrook End School will do everything we can to try to encourage physical activity throughout the day, ideally at least 30 active minutes for students. That could incorporate movement throughout the school day, for example, through an active classroom program. It could be their PE lessons, which we try to place physical activity at the heart of, regardless of what we are also trying to, to teach and encourage. We try to make sure at break and lunchtime, students have the opportunity to be active and there's access to outdoor space. And our extracurricular program is proven to be extensive and inclusive and try to ensure that all students have something that they can go and take part in. But we also need the help of the young people themselves and the parent carer guardians yourselves because we aren't able to provide 60 active minutes every day. There just isn't enough time in that school day. So if we can provide that 30 minutes at school, we encourage every young person to take responsibility and ownership of their own self-motivation to make sure they get their 30 active minutes. Thus then meeting the requirements of the World Health Organization and their suggestion that every young person under the age of 16 is able to access 60 active minutes every day to stay healthy for the rest of their lives. We welcome partnership throughout and that includes from parent care or guardian. So if there is anything that you feel that we could do or if there is anything that um, we could put on for students that we don't already have, we are more than happy to try to encourage growth in our curriculum and extracurricular offer. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen in to this presentation and I'd now like to hand you back over to the head teacher, Mr Holmwood. Well thank you very much for watching and listening to this information presentation. We hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions of course please do ask the year leader or the progress leader and we look forward to supporting you further. Thank you. <laughs>